I want to talk about ruptures that we have seen in the world. Real ruptures. Ruptures to the world order indicate its possible fall, which cannot occur if the, fl- the planet is to know peace. There are three which I believe merit most of our attention. First, the spread of COVID-19 and the Communist China, Chinese Party's mendacity as exemplified in its cover-up, have ruptured the world order and betrayed elements of the United Nations to, both, to be both obsequious and c- corrupt. Without question, the PRC's manipulation of the World Health Organization caused needless suffering and death worldwide. You should note that the, world, the Wuhan Institute of Virology remains open today. We must have vision, but we must learn from the history. In 1986, President Reagan's Department of Energy directed our national laboratories to commit their scientific and computational power to support what would be called the Human Genome Project. These national laboratories aided in the quest to prove the source of the Wuhan virus, to prevent pandemic from occurring. There is simply no substitute to understanding how it began, its genesis. It has caused millions of deaths around the world and continues to aggrieve and inflict enormous burdens on all of us across the globe. The second rupture, China's Belt and Road Initiative. It's a new form of imperialism. And although it seeks to compromise more than 60 nations, supposedly facilitating commerce and development, the Belt and Road Initiative is truly something else. It is the manifestation of a corrupt attempt to ensnare developing nations with promises of loans and result in infrastructure improvements. You've all seen this. Your banks know this. These loans may use national assets as collateral. Terms drafted into the agreements aren't transparent as the world requires, but indeed are purposely engineered to ensure that non-compliance of the debtor nation could lead to national asset forfeiture. We've seen this. The third rupture, the third rupture of the world order is manifested in China's stated intent to displace the United States as the world's preeminent power. It's that simple. At the height of the pandemic, it inculcated the Chinese Communist Party, did not moderate its revanchist objectives one bit, indeed it accelerated them with patent disregard for its prior commitments to the United Kingdom and the once free people of Hong Kong. China broke the Sino-British Joint Declaration. This declaration, as you all know, was words on paper, but it constituted a treaty filed in 1895 with the United Nations after China and the United Kingdom ratified it, designated Hong Kong to be a special administrative region of China, was to give them a high degree of autonomy, thereby committing the Chinese communists to maintain Hong Kong's market economy and its other freedoms. The treaty was scheduled to last until 2047, Everyone in this room knows this did not happen. And given, given what was done to Hong Kong and China's contempt of its solemn treaty obligations, each of us must ask this. On what consequential document is China's signature meaningful? Do we dare risk disregard this lesson concerning a premeditated rupture of the international order? For it is kleptocracy as we all know it. It's ruled by thieves. This is, of course, demonstrated by China's theft of intellectual property. I spoke about this a bit ago. Stole it from the United States and the Republic of Korea as well, and the litany of advanced economies alongside of us. Intellectual property theft by China has caused cumulative total losses to the United States economy that exceed $2 trillion. This is just in the last decade. This sum, if divided, could have made one in every 40 American families instant millionaires. Instead, this money went to China. Intellectual property theft is just a hydra. It's a hydra in its ability to damage. It thwarts incentives for business development, for risk-taking. In the face of theft, how do you protect your contracts and your property? Frankly, it's been estimated that three-quarters of China's business software today, its software market today, is filled with pirated software. The result? The result is that software expenditures in China are a small fraction of a comparable spending by American companies, conveying continued enormous unearned competitive advantages to Chinese Communist Party firms. So what do we do? Look, a piece of it is cybersecurity. We've got to do it better. 
our two countries should pool our talents in this sphere. I know that we will. For governments, for governments are not omniscient, nor are they always wise. We must recall the wisdom of Lord Acton, who stated that power tends to corrupt, that absolute power corrupts absolutely. As we consider what must be preserved and what must be done, let each of us be humble and consider this timeless observation concerning the nature of power, government, and consequences. Thank you, and may God bless you in all of your work.